These next three videos are going to cover what I've gone through with the first year nutrition students this week in their Excel tutorial. Uh, we've got three sets of data. You can see them here uh, listed as protein standard, animal data, and human data on these tabs near the bottom of the Excel. And what we're going to cover is how to use Excel to manipulate your data and uh, hopefully make your life easier when you're doing laboratory reports and later in, your por in the course when you're doing your dissertation. So the first set like of data, like I just mentioned, is uh, looking at a protein standard curve. So you may or may not have covered this in the laboratory practicals by now. Uh, if you haven't, well then you can use this to generate your standard curve and calculate your unknowns. So you can see the data has been input already into the spreadsheet. Uh, concentration, this is what the known concentration was. Most likely you've used bovine serum albumin as your standard protein and you've mixed it up in solution at the following concentrations. Then uh, you've measured it in a spectrophotometer, a photospectrophotometer, uh, and obtained some absorbance readings for each of these standards. Hopefully you've done it in at least duplicate, preferably triplicate, and now you have to average out each of these absorbances and generate a standard curve. So to start, let's highlight column E and put in the header as mean. Um, now to calculate the average, you enter up here in their functions bar and hit the equal sign type in average you'll see that it starts to autocomplete and you select average by double clicking now you highlight the cells which you want to use uh, to calculate your mean and then hit enter and you see your mean's been calculated so it's automatically formatted um, to three decimal places similar to what the absorbances you've recorded in your spreadsheet have been if it had not uh, produced three decimal places you can edit up here under the numbers tab uh, the number of decimal places which it reports as you can see there so you just click to get to the appropriate number so once that's been done you don't have to repeat it's a single step process once it's done here you notice the small square in the bottom corner of cell E2 you put the cursor over it when it turns into a small uh, cross you drag it down uh, to E7 and you can see now you have all your absorbances so now that that's been complete uh, we can now uh, generate a standard curve and the uh, linear equation of the standard curve so then you can calculate your unknowns uh, the concentration of protein in these unknowns so to do this you would then go to insert we're going to insert a chart and we are selecting scatter plots so select scatter plot and select simple scatter plot the very first one and you can see you get a blank canvas the chart area as it's called so this may look very different if you're using one of the earlier versions of Excel I'm using Excel 2013 not exactly sure how this appears on the Mac version which I think is 2010 um, or 2011 and I know this is not how it looks on Office 2010 however the functions are still named the same and you can figure it out f relatively easily um, so the first thing we're going to have to do is input the data that we want to use to generate our standard curve. So to do that, right click in the middle of the chart area and you'll see this option, select data. Select the data and now you'll have two options to input the data. Either select an entire range, which is not really appropriate for us because we have the uh, absorbances which we use to calculate the mean in the middle. And so we're not going to do that. And I'm going to show you how to do it in a different step. So an, an alternate way to do that is to just add. So the series name we won't put it in here for now uh, we'll input that later but you need to put in now the X values and the Y values so our X values are the concentration and then you select OK here and then your Y values are the absorbances and you select say OK uh, and once that's done you can close it out and you can see here uh, series one it doesn't have a name because we did not name it but you can see the concentrations are over here on the horizontal axis or the x-axis then say OK and you can see on our chart <coughs> that there is all the, the uh, appropriate um, data points are displayed so now I'll show you an alternate way to do this if you are using the new version of Excel so I will click here and I'll delete what we just did uh, 
not let me delete it. So I'll actually go back in to select data and I'll remove it from in here. So we have this other option of select chart area or the chart data range. So to do that you would put the cursor, activate the cursor in this box, uh, click the corner here and then you can just highlight the entire set of data. Return here and now you can see that it has everything selected. So we can then, if you're using Excel 2013, uh, remove the unwanted data, which would be absorbance 1, 2, and 3, and then we're left with the mean. And you can see the horizontal or x-axis has already been automatically selected as being the protein concentrations from column A. Say OK, and as you can see, the graph is uh, exactly as the last version. So I personally don't like grid lines, so I delete them. Uh, and then this is not a very imaginative name, so we're going to change the title here as well. Uh, but for now, we'll just delete it. Uh, and now you have a clean graph. Decimal places are appropriate. However, the axes are not labeled. Um, so you can either, by clicking this uh, chart elements selection, say axis titles, select them, and then you see they both appear then you can actually directly edit them uh, by just selecting and typing in what the axis should be labeled. So the y-axis is absorbance. Uh, and the y-axis is concentration. And you have units on concentration, which are milligrams per mil. The absorbance doesn't is a unitless number uh, because it was measured at a single wavelength. It was the absorb maximum absorbance at a single wavelength on this uh, photospectrophotometer, uh, and that would be measured in nanometers. Um, but absorbance as a unitless number is appropriate here. So now, how do we generate the equation from which we can then calculate our unknowns? Well, it's relatively simple. Select one of the data points and you can see the entire series has now been selected. So then once that's been done, you can right click and you get the option here to add a trend line. So we are adding a linear trend line. And because at concentration zero we didn't get zero absorbance, we don't want to set the intercept at any particular number or set it at zero, so we will let this line pass through whichever point on the y-axis is appropriate. But we do want to tick off display equation on chart as well as display r squared value on chart. So once that's been done, if you're using an older version, you would select OK and go back to the main screen. In 2013, you just close out. Now you can see a new box appears on your graph and this contains the R squared which gives you an indication of how well your data points are fitting this trend line and in this case we have an R squared of 0.98 which is close to 1 which is as high as you're going to get which means it's a perfectly straight line and you can use this linear equation to calculate the protein concentrations of your unknown samples. And that concludes part 1, uh, generating a standard curve.